foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he has said to you who for refuge to Jesus have fled? Fear not, I am with thee, O be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will still give thee aid. I'll strengthen thee, help thee, and cause thee to stand upheld by my gracious, omnipotent hand. When through the deep waters I call thee to go, the rivers of woe shall not be overflow, for I will be with thee thy troubles to bless and sanctify to thee thy deepest distress. When through fiery trials thy pathway shall lie, my grace all sufficient shall be thy supply. The flame shall not hurt thee, I only design thy dross to consume and thy gold to refine. The soul that on Jesus hath leaned for repose, I will not, I will not desert to his foes. That soul that all hell should endeavor to shake, I'll never, no, never, no, never forsake. Amen. For undivided attention now to the Word of God, Brother Bemis is going to preach to you at this time. And Dennis, Lydia, Hurton, but the job's done. Okay, keep praying for Lydia. She had her wisdom teeth out today. She needs your prayers. Brother Bemis. Good evening. Glad to see you here this evening. Pray that God gives you something for your soul. You came to get a blessing, and I trust that God will uh, give you a blessing. Uh, today, we went down and saw uh, a fellow that got saved in my church. He used to be a Mennonite, and he came down to my church and got saved, Brother uh, Mervyn Troyer. And I got a chance to go down and see him today. And it was just encouragement to my heart to talk to somebody that uh, found Jesus Christ under my ministry. And it's things like that. When I get to heaven, I get going up there. I'm going to look around for all the people that uh, got saved by my preaching or my hand out of track or something that I did. And you say, what is that going to be? That's going to be a wonderful day, man wonderful day and when I get there and sit down and look around I'm gonna look for some of you folks to come sit with me and so if I'm sitting over there don't rush on by <laughs> don't rush on by uh, at a higher place or a better seat just come on sit with me we're all in the same boat amen and I'll be right down there just as you go right in the front gate there. And I'll be right to the, in the lowest room right at the bottom there. And you can sit with me. Say amen. amen. And that's going to be a wonderful day. And that's what I'm looking forward to. Now, I want you to take your Bible tonight. And, uh, of course, 
Uh, I heard a guy preach one time, and he'd preach, and when he got to about 75% of the way through his message, I said to myself, that's what he's trying to say. <laughs> and so I'm, I started naming my messages so you'll know right from the very beginning what I'm trying to say. So I want you to take your pen and find a place in your Bible now. I want you to find a spot, uh, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7 is a good spot. If you haven't got something already there, but uh, if you can find a spot at 23 Proverbs 23 now, and let's pick up verse 7. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I pray tonight that you would please wash us in your precious blood, Lord, each one of us. Lord, I pray you'd cleanse our hearts. Lord, cleanse my heart. And Father, I pray that there would be no controversy between you and me in any matter. And Lord, there is, Lord, show it to me. And Lord, help me to turn from it. And Father, I pray for your blessing tonight. I pray you'd speak to the heart of your people. And Lord, I pray you'd do the work. Lord, without you, nothing will be done. Lord, you know that if it's me, it's all hot air, and it's just uh, vain effort, and it'll bring forth death, Father. It won't bring forth life. But, Lord, if you'll do the work, it'll bring forth life. It'll bring forth abundant life. In Jesus Christ's precious name, I pray, and for his sake, amen. Now, I want you to take your Bible and turn to Proverbs chapter uh, 23, and... Um, uh, verse 7 says, For as he... Now circle that word right there. What does it say? He think, he what? Thinketh in his what? Heart. That means down here. Now do you know what I think in my heart? No, absolutely not. Nobody knows what I think in my heart. Nobody. Now except the Lord and the devil, and myself. I think it's in his heart. Eat and drink, saith he, but his heart is not, what? With thee. All right, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now look at it again. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now the name of my message tonight is, What do you say to yourself when you talk to yourself my wife is constantly saying to me Nathan you're talking to yourself and I say yes I am and I'm going to answer too you say what that <laughs> no you say more important is what we say to other people no it is important what you say to other people my Bible says, Every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give the account therefore in the day of judgment. Amen? And my Bible, Every idle word that man shall speak, they shall give an account therefore in the day of judgment. Amen, brother. And my Bible says, By thy words thou shall be justified, and by thy words thou shall be condemned. So what you say is very important to other people. Uh, words are like a sword. They're like a sword. Words can cut, boy. I mean, cut all the way down to the bottom. More people have quit a church over something somebody said than anything you shake a stick at. More marriages have split over something that he said or she said than anything else. Say amen. You see, what is it? Words are very important. But more than that, it's what do you say to yourself that counts? I mean, down in here. And I got a list of them, and I want you to write them down. Some things that you say to yourself, and you got to answer them. You got to answer them. And so, brother, when you talk to yourself, and you should, that's just part of life, you got to answer yourself back. But you better keep very careful what you say to yourself. Because you've got to have an answer that goes with it. Number one. Number one, write it down the margin of your Bible. Don't say, poor me. Poor 
<laughs> you know what the answer is to it? The answer is that self-pity. When you say, poor me, you say right back to him, self-pity. There you go, pitying yourself again, Nathan. Come on, come on. You're pitying yourself again. Answer yourself right back. Don't you say, poor me, me. That's a, that's a matter of self-pity. God puts things across your path, brother, to test your faith and try your faith and put you into place to make you strong. You get a soldier by hammering a soldier and beating a soldier and criticizing a soldier. You'll never be a soldier for Jesus Christ if you don't get hammered. Amen, brother. You can't be sweet and nice and everything go through your Christian life and you be a soldier for Jesus Christ. It won't happen. you got to get hammered before you, you'll make be strong. you got to get your faith tested and put to a test. The greatest Christian that ever lived. you know what God said? I say he's Christian, but he's in the Old Testament. And God said to him, I want to test your faith. Now, you all with me? He says, Abraham, take your son and go sacrifice him. Now, anybody got a son here? Whose son uh, is your daddy here? Your daddy's not here. Is your daddy here? But suppose God says to your daddy, you sacrifice your son. Yeah, I see your eyes kind of come out a little bit there. <laughs> And Daddy, you say, what? God just wanted to test him on the main thing that he loved. God's going to test you on what you love. You know what Abraham said? Abraham says, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Abraham took that boy out and put him up on the altar and took a knife up in the air, took that knife up in the air like that and said, God, if that's what you want, that's what I want. You're going to bring him back from the dead. That's what he said. You're going to bring him back from the dead. Uh, Lord, I have no problem with it because you promised me this, son, and you promised my seed would be as the sands of the seas and the stars of heaven. You're going to bring him back from the dead, Lord. Up with that knife. You know what God said? He said, Abraham, no. I just tested you. Woo! You say, testing what? Obedience. Obedience. When God takes you, brother, and says something to you, don't you say, poor me, go take my son. Poor me, he's going to take my son. Oh, poor me. You say that, brother, you know what you do? You give up the battle and you'll quit. Take your Bible and turn over to 1 Samuel chapter 27. <clears throat> I'm going to give you a great man that said to himself, For me. Take your Bible and turn to 1 Samuel. And turn to 1 Samuel chapter 27. Don't you say, For me. You better answer yourself right quick like and say, That's self pity. That's self pity. Turn to 1 Samuel. And in 1 Samuel chapter 27, and I want you to pick up a great man. Now, how many of you believe this man here in 1 Samuel chapter 27 is a great man? It said, and who? David. Now, is King David a great man in the eyes of God? He sure is. King David's a great man in the eyes of God. David's going to come back in the millennium and he's going to reign with Jesus Christ over the nation of Israel. Christ is going to reign, and the second man in order is King David. He can come back and reign on this earth. Don't tell me David ain't great. David's uh, great among the greats, boy. Now watch what happens. In 1 Samuel chapter uh, 27, in verse 1, it said, And David said, where? In... His what? It's what you say to yourself that counts. It's what you say to yourself that counts. Don't say, poor me. And David said in his heart, I shall now perish one day by the hand of Saul. 
and there's nothing better for me than that I should speedily escape into the land of where? The Philistines. That's a foreign land. That's out of the land of Israel. David shouldn't have went to the land of the Philistines. He shouldn't have went there. He gave up and quit and says, well, this guy's trying to kill me and he's chasing me all over the countryside and he almost caught me over there and he almost caught me over there and he's chasing me. Man, he come close the overnight. He was on one side of the mountain. I was on the other. Oh, man, he's, one of these days he's going to catch me and kill me. Oh, for me! And David gets it, gives up the battle and stops fighting. And that's what will happen to you if you say, for me. You'll quit fighting as a soldier of Jesus Christ. You're in the battle with the devil. The devil is my enemy. The devil is your enemy. I'm not your enemy. He's not your enemy. They're not your enemy. And you're going you're gonna to think that somebody else is your enemy. I ain't your enemy. You're not my enemy. The devil's my enemy. And he's your enemy. And when you say, poor me, the devil's just whispering, yeah. You're just not getting treated right. They're just not treating you like they ought to treat you. You deserve better treatment than that. Oh, yes, you do. You ought to complain and why. Why? Oh, oh, poor me. No whiners. Don't say that to yourself. You'll quit the battle. When it's almost over and the battle's almost over, you don't want to quit when the battle's almost over. You want to be fighting a good fight of faith. The Bible says it's required of a steward that a man be found faithful. The Lord, when it comes back at the judgment seat of Christ, says, Well done, thy good and what? faithful servant. So he wants you to be right in your pew doing what God wants you to do with everything going around and the battle going and you think it's, oh, what can I do? I'll tell you what you can do. You can be faithful right in your pew and being faithful doing what God wants and in the battle getting hammered, getting shot at, getting hurt, getting criticized, getting laughed at and everything going to pieces and your bloom pops like that. Don't you say, don't you say, poor me, poor me. Answer yourself, Nathan, the self-pity. Get your eye off yourself and get it on somebody else and help them. Now you got it. Don't look in. Don't look at me. You know, that's how a guy goes nuts. If I look at myself long enough, I see something I don't like. And I look at him, and I get looking at him long enough, I just get kind of weird. You with me? And get weirder and weirder and weirder. That's how you go nuts. Get your mind and your heart off yourself and put it on somebody else and help them. <laughs> Number two, don't say, don't say, and I'll write it down, don't say, I'll get you. Don't say, I'll get you, boy, I'll get you. Don't say that to yourself. That's disastrous. You know what that is? got to answer yourself. That's revenge. Y'all with me? Anybody with me? Say amen. That's revenge. What should you say? I'll forgive him. I'll forgive him. I'll forgive him. You know what a bunch of uh, the part of the Christian life is? Every Christian has got to learn something about forgiveness. Every Christian's got to learn something about it. Because you will have to forgive more than once in your Christian life. Why, why is that? i got to forgive. You've got to forgive. You've forgiven me. And I've forgiven you. Say amen. You say, what is it? Ought to be automatic. 
whether a guy asks or not, just automatically say, Lord, I'm going to forgive, I'm going to forgive, I'm not going to, I'm not going to have any revenge. Now, I want you to take your Bible and turn to the book of Genesis and turn to Genesis chapter 25. Don't say to yourself, I'll get you. Don't you say that. Turn to Genesis and turn to Genesis chapter 25 <coughs> and pick up, let's pick up verse, uh, verse 22. Genesis chapter 25. And let's, uh, let's pick up verse uh, 22, if I'm correct. And the children struggled together within her. And she's going to have two babies. And they're twins. They struggled together within her. Now, I want you to imagine that a minute. Here she is. She's got one boy on this side and one boy on this side. And she's pretty big. Y'all with me? And this boy on the inside is going, Nyah! and the other boy's going, Nyah! and the other boy's going, Nyah! and the other boy's going, Nyah! y'all with me? <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> Look at the passage of scripture. <laughs> And her children struggled together within her. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went and inquired of the Lord. And the Lord said to her, Two nations are in thy womb. Now, was there two nations in there? Two whole nations? <laughs> no, no. That's God looking forward. That's God looking forward. That's the foreknowledge of God. And God's saying, I'll tell you what, there's two nations in there, but what's he talking about? He's talking about Jacob and Esau later. One is the nation of Israel. One is the nation of Jordan. They're still here today. And they're killing each other. They're throwing each other up with bombs. Don't you read the newspaper? Don't you have a television? You want to see a bone fish kept? They're going to kill. They're going to kill twenty more tomorrow. Just sure as you live and breathe. It ain't over. Where did it start at? One fellow says, "I'll get you." He hammers him right there, right there on the inside. Don't you say I'll get you. You say why? Look a little bit further. Verse, uh, two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over, like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that came out his brother out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. So as they're born, Jacob says, You ain't going to kick me. Grabs hold of his heel to keep him from getting kicked. You know what that is? I'll get you one more time. <coughs> oh, 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 you got a hold of my heel. <laughs> Well, uh, well, I just thought I'd go and get him one more time. And those two brothers went through life like that. And they hated each other. One brother sold his birthright for a bowl of chili. Remember, if you remember the story, say amen. Sold his birthright for a bowl of chili. Then it said he hated him. Then it said, I'll kill you one of these days. When daddy dies, when daddy dies, I'll kill you. He never got rid of that. Stayed in his heart and stayed in his heart and stayed in his heart. And it went from his generation to the next generation. And the Bible says a perpetual hatred. And it's here today after three 
thousand years. Right in Israel. Right here. Don't say, I'll get you. You got me, I'll get you. Don't say that. Say, I'll forgive. I'll forget. It's okay. It's, I forget it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Just, just, just go on, man. I forget. I'm just going to go on and serve God and forget about the whole thing. But he didn't say that. So his children got it, and his grandchildren got it, and his great-grandchildren, and his great-grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, 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 great Great, 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 and it's still here. You better not say to yourself, I'll get you. Wait for an opportunity, and I'll nail you. Don't say that. Don't ask it. Nathan, shut up. How about forgiveness? All with me? Say amen. Uh, another thing, you're not to say to yourself. You're not to say it to yourself. Don't say, I'll fix it my way. I'll write it down, brother. <laughs> write it down. Don't say, I'll just fix it my way. You know what we have a tendency to do? We have a tendency to want to do it our way. I want it my way. I know a lot of preachers that will say, my way or the highway, bud. You know what's going to happen to those preachers? The Lord's going to say, if you want to do it your way, you do it your way. You know what I found through the years? My way is always a mess. It is. My way is always a mess. I bought me a four-wheeler. One of these big old vroom, 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 four-wheelers. You know, and they're, they're fun. <laughs> and I went out one day and I was plowing the snow out in the parking lot. And I got all the snow plowed off the parking lot. And I thought, well, I want to see how fast it will go. And I thought, well, I got a plow on the front, so it shouldn't raise up too high and fall back on me. So with the plow, it's a little bit heavier, so I should be okay. So I grabbed a hold of this and the plow on and, and I said, I'm going pretty fast. Just a little bit faster. <laughs> oh, I'm going too fast. Oh, I let off of the gas. And that plow dropped down and caught the edge like that and swung around like that and I shot off there like a bullet. <laughs> I'm going through the air and I'm thinking, I have destroyed my four-wheeler. I'm about to destroy my face. You know, it happens in a split second. You don't have much time to think, you know. <laughs> I better duck and roll. <clears throat> and I landed right on that shoulder right there and dislocated my clavicle bone. Oh, did that hurt? And I slid and slid and slid and slid and slid. And I'm turning an arm on my back and I'm looking back. And here comes my four-wheeler flipping after me. I mean, flipping out six feet in the air, boy, just coming. I got, oh, no, 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 it's going to land on me. And I took my feet and stood it up on both sides like that. Oh, don't let it land on me, Lord. Yow, whap, right against my feet. What a dumb trick was that. Man, a 10-year-old can do better than that. And I get up and walk around, and I look around and say, I hope nobody sees me. <laughs> oh, I hope Louise don't come out and watch me right now and see me as up on the side. She's going to say, what have you done? I knew you were going to do that. And then I thought, oh, Lord, don't, don't let her see me now. And it's on its side and it's running. 
<laughs> so I get out, and with my shoulder that hurts me, it's killing me, I go, ah! Some says, push with the other shoulder. <laughs> so I push with this shoulder, got it back over, reached over and turned it off. I thought, I have destroyed everything. And I looked around, so man, 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 I thought, that ain't too bad. Ain't too bad. Oh, Lord, thank you. You didn't completely destroy it. It's brand new. And then I said, well, maybe I can start it up. And I hit the, the, the thing to bring up the plow, and it wouldn't work. I said, oh, no. I got to do something quick before Louise drives out of here. You know, I just think I better leave while before she sees me. So I went over and hid in the garage for a minute. And out went the car. There she goes out there, car. And I said, now's my time, boy. Get moved, man. Move. I ran back out there and took off the plow and started up the four-wheeler and got it back up in the truck and took it out to the four-wheeler place and said, please fix it real quick. Will you fix it real quick? And I'm going in the house and she says, uh, what do you, you, you don't look right. What's wrong? I'm a, I'm all right. I'm okay. She said, "What happened? Nothing. Nothing happened. Nothing, nothing happened. Some happened. Some happened. Nothing happened." I took off my coat. Took off my shirt. Got me to go take off my shirt, and I'm going. Ah. <laughs> oh! She said, "Something happened." What did you do? Oh, I just hurt my arm a little bit I, out there in my four-wheeler. I just hurt my arm a little bit without a four-wheeler. I just hurt my arm on a four-wheeler. I just rolled it, didn't you? You rolled it, didn't you? Yeah, I guess it did. Go down to the, go down to the chiropractor. Chiropractor puts it back in, gets it back in place. He gets it back, put it back in. And he doesn't tell me not to do anything. So, I use it some more, and out it comes again, and it's got a big old knot right there now. You know what that is? That's doing it my way. That's my way. Y'all follow me? That's my way. That's the smart guy. That's the brain. Don't do it your way. Do it God's way. There's something told me, don't do this. Right when I had my thumb on the, on the gas pedal, something says, don't do this. I said, but I want to see how fast it would go. I want to go fast. I like fast. I like to go fast. Something says, don't do it. See, we want my way. And we don't want God's way. You know your problem? Don't say to yourself, I'll fix it my way. You listening to me? You say, I want God's way. God, I want to do it your way. And I'll tell you something, you do it God's way, and you get God's way, and it'll be the right way. I'll show it to you in the Bible. Take your Bible and turn to, uh, i got to give you the verse, turn to uh, 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 Psalms 18 and look at verse 30. Psalms chapter 18 and look at verse 30. Stay with me now. Uh, take your Bible and turn to Psalms chapter 18 and look what it says in verse 30. As for God... Now, are you, are you looking in your Bible? You're going to mark your Bible? As for God, am I right? Am I right? Say amen. As for God, His what? Way. Right in the margin of your Bible, Lord, I don't want to do it my way. I don't want to do it my way. I want to do it your way. And He has a way, and you find out what God's way is, and you'll be successful. If you do it in your way, you're going to turn it to mud as sure as you live and breathe. Go ahead and do it your way. 
and it'll be a first class mass. If you want to, don't do it that way. His way is what, folks? One more time. His way is what? Perfect, perfect, perfect. Get on your hands and knees and say, God, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do, but I want your way. You know what we do? We get up and say, God told me to do this. Yeah, I bet he did. I bet he didn't. We just want to. We just want to do our own way, and then we want to blame God and say God told me to do this. Okay, God told you that. Give me a chapter and verse. Give me a chapter and verse. God told you to do that. I want chapter and verse. Give me a one right there, right there in that book. Give me a chapter and verse if you say God told you to do that. Fellow said one time a couple of weeks ago. His wife says, God, God wants me to divorce my husband. I'd like to see that verse. I'd like to see it. I'll show you some that says you shouldn't. Say amen. Can you show them at least three or four or five? I can show them at least five. I can't find one that says you oughta. You should. You're supposed to. God told you to do that. You got something that ain't in that book. That book will never contradict what the Holy Spirit says. That book will never contradict what God says. They don't contradict each other. That book will never contradict what God says. If God says something contrary to that book, God didn't say it. Say amen. See, you can find out. Don't you say, don't you say, I'll do it my way. All right, number four. Don't say, don't say, I'm the greatest. Don't say, I'm the greatest. Don't you say that? Don't you say that. Inside of us, inside of us, Everybody has. Now, you know what you do? You've got to answer yourself. Answer yourself like this. Nathan, that's pride. You've got to answer yourself. When you talk to yourself, you've got to answer yourself. Ah, I'm the greatest. I got to preaching in my church one night. I was preaching down through there, and boy, man, I mean, everything started to flow together. And I started to really go, man. I was just a screaming boy. I just going, going, God! Woo! And all of a sudden, I had a little bit of a cold. And a little bit of a cold, out come a great big old blob of snot. <laughs> and I reached around for my handkerchief, and I couldn't find it. I couldn't find my handkerchief. Couldn't find my handkerchief. I look underneath the pump. There wasn't one understand. I said, oh, no, what am I going to do? Everybody's looking at me. <laughs> you see, what did that do? Lord said, I got a way of humbling you, boy. You think you're this, you think you're really some boy, I, you ought to see that what you just did. <laughs> One time I'm preaching along, boy, I'm a going, I'm a screaming, Oh, I repent or pay, boy, I'm just a screaming, going back and forth like that. And my wife has a signal, I look at her once in a while, and we have a signal, and her signal is, when I'm messing up, she used to take her glasses off like that and put them back on when I'm really messing up. So she had her glasses off and she was gone. I thought, come on. Okay, all right. My ties are red. My, I'm all right. I'm okay. I'm doing fine. I'm all right. Can you quit that? Yeah! Ho, 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 man! Rock, I was just a screaming, man. And I looked at her again and said, Mud, she's killing me. She's killing me. 
And I got through and I went down. I said, what was wrong with you? She said, your pants were unzipped. <laughs> Don't ever say I'm the greatest. Don't say that. That's pride. And if you don't humble yourself, the Lord will humble you. And you don't want that. You don't want that. You say this. I, am, I only got the stuff God that you gave me. You gave it to me and I ain't got nothing that you didn't give me. And one for you, I'd be in hell tonight. I'm only what you've made me, God. I'm only what you've made me. You are what God made you, and you're no more, and you're no less. I'm a self-made man. Well, you sure did a poor job of it. You with me? Say amen. Don't say to yourself, when Nebuchadnezzar the king looked out and said, All this I have made. And he had t conquered the entire world. The entire known world. And he said, all this I have made. There wasn't anything else to conquer. It was all under Nebuchadnezzar and he had conquered the whole world. You know what God did to him? Next day, he's out there crawling down on his hands and knees and the hair growing and he's eating straw. He done went plump slap out of his mind. God said, I'll tell you what to do. I'm going to take your mind and you can't even think straight. He out there crawling on his hands and knees. What for? Because he said, I am the greatest. Don't say that self to yourself. Answer to yourself and say, you're only what God has made you. And no more and no less. You with me? Again, again, don't say, don't say, my, my power and might has gotten me all this wealth. I'm rich because I'm a good hard worker. You got money? How many of you got a little money in the bank? Don't tell nobody. <laughs> That's usually the way that works. It's okay, don't tell them. It's all right to have a little money in the bank. Got, you got a little money here, a little money here, a little money over here, a little money over here. Don't you say, I got that by my hard work. Don't you say that. You know why? God gave you the health and the ability to do that, and God gave you the brains and the talent to do it, and have God not given it to you like some folks he hadn't given it to, you wouldn't have it. You say, God gave me the money I got. God gave it to me. Don't you say, I deserve it. I'm a hard worker. They gave me, in Kalispell, Montana, they gave me a new double-wide trailer. It's not double-wide trailer. It's a modular home. It's nice. I walk through that house, and I say, ah, man, isn't that beautiful? All the walls are white. Isn't that beautiful? All oh, nice is there. Nothing wrong to enjoy nice things, is it? No, no, it ain't wrong. If God gives them to you, you're not. It's all right to enjoy them if God gives you to them. I have, I can enjoy any good thing that God has given me as long as I don't have to do a crook and, and, and deception and lies to get it. I'm entitled to it if I'm not a thief in getting it to it. I didn't call nobody. Lord just gave it to me. One of the people in my church, one of the ladies in my church said, Pastor, you deserve that. I said, no, sir, Reed. I don't deserve nothing. God just gave it to me. I don't deserve nothing. And you're in the same boat. You don't deserve it. God gave it to you. All right, take your Bible. I want to show you this fellow, Luke chapter 12. Don't you say, 
All of this I got, take your Bible and look at it in Luke chapter 12. This is what the fellow said in his heart. Luke chapter 12, verse 17. And uh, this is what he said. He talked about how rich he is. He talked about all his money. And he talked about how good he is. Uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 17 says, And he thought with where? Within himself. Underline that. He's talking to himself. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room wherein to bestow my fruit. And he said, Thus will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, So thou hast much good laid up for many years. Take thy eat. Uh, take thy ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou... Now, what did he say? And then did God call him a fool? Is he a fool? Is he a fool? God said he was a fool. God said that man was a fool. Why? He was rich. But he wasn't rich toward God. He was rich. He, he had money. But he wasn't rich toward God. If you, you could be both. You could be both. J.C. Penney's was both. J.C. Penney's, the man that started Penney's stores, was a multimillionaire. And he was a great Christian. You could be both. That night... Thy soul shall be required of thee, and then who shall these things be that thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasures for himself, and is not rich toward God. Then what should a guy do? He should say, there's nothing wrong with money, say amen. Oh, there's really nothing wrong with it. <laughs> but what is it? It's where a guy is one-sided. And he says, okay, I'll get as much money as I can get, and that's my success, and I will be successful if I have a bunch of money. You can't take it with you. You've got to be rich toward God both ways. You say, oh, it's fine to get money, but make sure you're rich toward God. Make sure you do something for God. Make sure that you spend your life in God's behalf and use it for God. Then you'll be rich. You'll have some treasures. You'll have some treasures up in heaven. All this in heaven too. If you don't do that, and all you got is down here when you die, all you got is a nice house and a bunch of nice clothes and a bunch of nice cars, and when you die, you can't take it with you. Try it. Try to take it with you. I'm going to put it in the hearse. Put my gun, my, my all, all my four wheeler, and. <laughs> And the whole works right in the hearse. <laughs> Want to bet? What you do? You got to do something with it. You got to do it with the Lord. Saying, I'm going to use this, and I'm going to use it in God's work, and I'm going to take care of it, and I'm going to make sure that God's gospel tracks put out, and I'm going to make sure somebody gets saved, and I'm going to make sure somebody's a blessing, and I'm going to use it for God. Again, don't say, don't say, nobody sees me. Don't say, nobody sees me. Take your Bible and turn to Psalm chapter 10, look at verse 11. Psalm chapter 10, verse 11. Don't say, nobody sees me. Psalm chapter 10. And in Psalm chapter 10, look what it says in verse 11. He said, where folks? In Psalms 10, verse 11. He has said in his what? Heart. Down there in his heart. He, there where he's saying it to himself, and he's talking to himself. Said in his heart, God hath forgotten. He hideth his face. He will never see me. Now you've got to answer yourself real quick. When you say, nobody sees me, immediately answers, God sees me. The devil sees me. 
and I see myself. <laughs> you say, you're crazy, preacher. No. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the good and the evil. Does that mean God sees everything? Can you run and hide from God? Is there some place that you can hide where God don't see you? Where is that place at? It's nowhere in the universe. God will see you when you're in outer space a billion miles. God will see you. When you're down in the bottom of hell, God will see you. There's no place in the entire universe that God won't see you. Through his eyes there. He sees what's going on. You, know what, you say, why is this don't say nobody sees me? Because I've said it to myself. I look around and say, my wife ain't watching. And nobody in my church sees me. So I'm going into the grocery store. I'm going down and I'm looking into the donut rack. And I'm sitting there like that in the donut rack and I'm looking in there. Something says, Pastor, you're a diabetic. You cannot look at them donuts any longer. Run! I'm looking in the donuts. I saw a donut yesterday that was this big. <laughs> this big that donut was. My mouth, and I'd already just ate. My mouth was watering. Shirley says, don't look at that. I looked in there. Looked in there, looked in there, looked around, looked around, said, nobody sees me. Pulled the slaughter, the dial door open, got me a little piece of paper, reached up there and said, man, that thing's plump full of sugar. Grabbed it out, had it in my hand like this, and here stands Shelley Parkinson. She's in my church. She comes there every Sunday. She's standing right, I turn around right there, Shelly! <laughs> Nobody sees you? She tells everybody. <laughs> you don't tell Shelly nothing, she'll tell the whole world. On the telephone too. <laughs> Shelly, what are you doing here? <laughs> she looks at me and says, Preacher, I'm here to buy a donut too. <laughs> I thought, oh man, you make me feel good. We're sin together. <laughs> and I'm killing me. Killing me. Killing me. Who's my eyesight? Who's my fingers? Who's my toes? It's killing me. you got a diabetic right here in your church. God's been gracious with him. And I'm not supposed to eat those donuts. Will you pray for me that I don't eat donuts? When nobody sees me is when I have the hardest time in the world. I walked up in the Sunday school room, and there in the Sunday school room, there was a donut that had been sitting there for three weeks. <laughs> and it was hard as a rock. I picked it up. I said, man, this baby's hard. It's not like a Krispy Kreme. <laughs> I thought, nobody sees me. That'll kill you. Don't say nobody sees me. You get out there somewhere and you get in sin and you say, Daddy didn't see me. Mama didn't see me. I can get away with this. God sees you. God sees you. The devil sees you. And he will not forget. He's accusing you day and night. While you're sleeping, he's making accusation against you. He sees you and he won't forget. And you see yourself. And the hardest one to forgive is yourself. 
God can forgive me quicker and better than I can forgive myself. So remember, don't say, don't say, nobody sees me. Nobody sees me. Last of all, don't you say, I'll never do that. I'll never do that. About the time you say, you, got, you know, I was preaching one Sunday morning, and I got to preaching on whiskey and drinking booze and getting drunk and going to the bar. Boy, I would just scream along down through there, and i say, I will never go to a bar. I will never take a footstep into a bar again. God has saved me from a bar. And... The next, un- the next Monday morning, I get in my car and I'm going to go to a preacher's conference and I head up over that pass over there and get over the pass and it starts snowing. And that snow starts coming down through there like that and hitting the windshield and I can hardly see out the side of the road. And boy, I mean, it's coming down, the wind's blowing about 50 miles an hour and I got my two children with me and my wife with me. And I'm going, oh man, I, I don't know what I'm doing here. What am I doing here, Lord? What am I doing here? And I got back down the other side of that path. And I go out there, and here comes to that one of those cross corners over there. And then the roads closed. The semi went sideways, and they got the road closed. And they said, there's nothing you can do. Right over there is a place you can go in and sit down. So I pulled up in front of it, and you know what it was? It was a bar. And something says, you said you would never go in a bar. And I said, Lord, I'm a fool. I'm a fool. Lord, I said I would never do Lord, I said I'd never. And it got colder. And it got colder. And I looked at my boy. And John's going. Oh. And Joel's going. Oh. And my wife says, let's go in. I said, all right, let's go in. Come on, let's go in. I went in the bar. And you, you've been in the bar. You know what they smell like? Go in the bar, and I'm in that bar, and I'm saying, I said, I said, I'd never do this. I said, oh, God, forgive me. I'll never make a stupid mistake like that again and say, I will never do that. When I see something happen to some Christian, when you see something happen to some Christian, don't you say, I'll never do that. About that time, the devil goes up there and says, did you hear what that idiot said? <laughs> and the Lord says, yes, I heard him. Well, all right, you can test him like you tested the other fellow. Uh, go for it. And then he gets permission, and down he comes, and he puts on me what he put on that guy. And what do you suppose will happen? I'll fail just like he did even though I'm the pastor of the church. What makes me any different than anybody else? I'm just a human being. I'm just a man just like the next guy. And if the devil puts on me what he puts on some of you, I step back and say, ooh, well, I'm staying out of this. I ain't going to say I'd never do that. Because when I get in that position, I might do worse. Don't you ever say to yourself, I'd never do that. Say this. Answer yourself and say, by the grace of God, you would never do that. You listening to me? Nathan, by the grace of God, you would never do that. You better answer yourself right. You better talk to yourself right when you talk to yourself. The best thing to do is you just say, Lord, I'd probably do it. If I had the same thing she had and did what they had, the temptations had, the trials had, the troubles had, everything they got, I would probably mess it up like you wouldn't believe. Every eye closed and every head bowed. Make sure when you talk to yourself, you talk to yourself right. It's more important what you say to yourself than it is what you say to other people. And it's more important what you say to yourself than you can imagine through the Bible. 
Now, I want, you to, I want some of you to, that, that are kind of argumentative with me tonight. In your heart, I want you to go home and get your Bible. Now, I want you to sit down and say, Now, Lord, I want you to show me all the places where a fellow said something that made all the difference in the world, and he said it in his heart. What he said to himself. And you'll find out I, didn't, I couldn't even mention... But I couldn't, I'd preach here all night and next day and the next day to show you all those places. So, Christian, I, w- I want you to do something. I want you to say the right thing to yourself in your heart, whatever it is, whatever it is, I want you to stop saying some things. In your heart, stop saying it. And say, now, Lord, you know what I'm saying to myself right now. You know what I've been saying in my heart. Because he he knows it. Now, now let him say, okay, Lord, uh, give me that right heart. Give me that right kind of heart. Lord, there's something went wrong with my heart. Something went wrong with it. And I want the right heart again. Renew unto me a clean heart. A right spirit. Now, will you pray that? Will you do it right now? Let's all stand. Let's all stand. Take your hymnal and turn to page 388 in your hymnal. God spoke to your heart and you've been saying the wrong thing. You've been saying something down there that you just forgot that God sees. You just forgot nobody knows. You forgot that that thing right there is so important. And you're letting it slide. Now you got, you got to change something, man. You've got to change something. You got to do something different. And then go, if you don't do it, nobody going to do it for you. Now, will you do something? I talk to God and God talks to me right here and I get this thing right right here and I say okay God you got it you got it now I'm gonna do something I don't want to waste my life I don't want to waste my life Uh, any life that's spent on me is a wasted life any life you spend on yourself is wasted Any life you spend on Jesus Christ and doing what God wants you to do is not a wasted life. You got it's too important. You got one shot. Life is a black powder rifle. You got one shot. So make sure that you do it for God Almighty and say, God, here it is, and give it your best shot. And do it now. Start right now. Will you? Will you? Come on. You know what God is in the business of? 
He's in the business of forgiveness. He's in the business of forgiveness. That's his business. And you know what he wants to do? He wants to forgive you. But you have to do your part. And he'll forgive you just like that. Just like that. With no strings attached. And he forgets. He forgets. But you've got to do that. You've got to say, okay, God, here I am. If you will, he will. Will you? Will you? One more. Now, 